Hello, everybody. This is Santiago Valencia coming at you. Hope you're doing well. It is wonderful to see you. Today, I'm actually doing a tutorial on Cubase, one of my very first. Um, and I would actually thought we should probably start off on a tutorial on how to get more organized. And one of those ways to get organized is by doing a color palette. Now, a while back, I created a custom palette for myself, uh, spent a good amount of time figuring out what colors I wanted to use in the order that I was going to put them in and how I was gonna really put it to use. So today we're gonna to go over how to create a color palette, how to create custom colors in Cubase for yourself. And now if you're using another DAW like Logic or Pro Tools or FL Studio, this will probably come in handy with you as well because you'll be able to see the color palette that I'm using and hopefully be able to use that in another DAW. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. But for right now, let's go ahead and get started in Cubase. And let me show you how you go ahead and do some custom colors on here. So here we are in Cubase Pro 11. So what you'll wanna do is go to your project drop down menu and then project color setup. And then this menu will come up. And as you can see here, we have um, a good amount of colors. I think I have around 144, 46, 48, 140 something colors that I've created and grouped in different spectrums of color, like red and orange that you'll see here. And we'll go a little bit deeper into that. But for right now, let me go ahead and show you how to create your own custom color. So let me take you down to the bottom here. And uh, if I click on one of these colors, at the bottom, you'll see a little cogwheel at the bottom. And you can go ahead and click on insert color. <clears throat> Scroll down a little further, and then you'll see that your color that you just created is titled untitled color. So in this particular, ca um, in this particular case, we're gonna go ahead and let's call it, um, you know, blue test one. Okay, now this color that you see here doesn't look very blue. So go ahead and click on the color here to the left and you'll be able to choose from this horizontal menu here, the spectrum in which you want to go. So we're gonna go somewhere blue here, okay? Let's go there. And then once you get into this bigger menu here, you can go ahead and pick the color picker and decide which color you want. So let's just go with something like that, okay? Now, here below this, you'll see that there's the current color, which is the color that we came from, and now the new color that we're picking. And below the new color, you're going to see the formula of this color. We have it in an RGB color. R, red, green is for G, and then B is blue. So these are the three colors, the primary colors that we mix to get other colors. And in this particular case, we have R, which is 46, G, which is a value of 68, and B, which is a value of 150. So we have our RGB at 46, 68, and 150. We're gonna go ahead and click OK. And there it is, there's our blue test. Now for now, let's go ahead and click Apply. That's going to apply the color to the Cubase session that you're in. And if you go to the top here into your, what I'm calling your icon of a painter's palette, drop that down. And you'll see all these colors that we've been using. Go all the way to the bottom here, and you'll see if you hover on the very last one, you'll see the one we just created, which is the blue test number one. And there you go. That's how you go ahead and create your own custom color. Okay? Now, let's go back, and I can show you how to go ahead and do a little bit more organization. So if I take this blue test, and I click on it, and I click on the cogwheel once again, instead of doing an insert color, we can go ahead and duplicate this color. Why are we gonna do this? I'll show you in a moment. So let's duplicate the color. We scroll down a little bit more, and now we have blue test number one with an asterisk. Let's go ahead and change that to blue test two. Okay. And now these two colors are, are identical. But let's say I wanted to go ahead and start creating a spectrum or a collection of colors or a collection of blue colors. And I want my next color to be a little bit less intense, a little lighter perhaps. So let's go ahead and click on that and just maybe pick something like that. 
So here's our current color, our new color, and the RGB formula for that color. Click on OK. And that's how you can go ahead and start creating a collection of colors. So we'll go ahead and apply on that. And immediately on your drop down of your painter's palette, you'll see that it has been added here at the bottom. Okay, cool. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the custom colors that I've created in the past. Right now we have about 18 different color groups, okay? Um, and in each one of those groups, I have eight choices of intensity. So we have about eight times 18, about 144, I think it is. On the top row, you'll see that these are my reds. Second row here, you'll see these are labeled orange, okay? So <clears throat> let's go through all this. This is where it's gonna get a little bit more well, I'm gonna treat you to all of the formulas that I've created. It did take me several hours to go ahead and come up with these formulas, the colors I wanted to choose, plus inputting each one manually with a specific RGB code. So I have a special treat for you at the end of this video that you're not necessarily gonna to have to do the painstaking you know, one by one that I did. But for now, for those who want to know the formula of each color that I did, for just your own purposes, or even for putting it in another DAW like Logic or Pro Tools, I'm gonna go ahead and go through each single color and show you the formula of each one. So this part's gonna be a little bit long, so if you wanna forward ahead to the end of the video where I have my little surprise for you, go ahead and forward to the timestamp that you see on the screen right now. In the meanwhile though, we're gonna go through each one here and um, let's get started, okay? So let's gonna start with our red color collection. And here's our RGB formula right here. So this is red one. And let's go through every single one here. All right, let's move on to our next grouping. We have orange next. All right. After orange, we have lemon. I kind of named these groupings depending on what I kind of saw those colors remind us of something in the real world. So we have a few fruits and you'll see some other things that we have coming down the pipeline. Now I'm sure you've noticed by now with each color collection or grouping, um, I start off with something light, less intense, and go with something more intense, saturated, um, and darker perhaps, depending on how you go. All right, that was lemon. Let's start with pear. Next up is lime. So again, if you like any of these colors or collections or spectrums, all you'll have to do is look at what I'm showing you here, copy down the RGB code, and that input that color into your DAW session. All right, after lime comes green. 
Now green and lime are very, very close to one another, but you'll see that once you have it in actual use that there is a slight difference between the two tones. All right, next up is honeydew. Now, in practice, these colors can actually help you, um, you know, advance your workflow and make it actually faster. If you get used to using these colors, uh, for example, I go ahead and typically use my strings in my orchestral uh, template. I typically color my strings red and variations of red, depending on the articulation or the instrument that I'm using. And when I have all of my instruments out, it makes it easier for me to find where I am. All right, that was mint. Next up is cyan. All right, and after cyan comes indigo. Next up we have teal. All right, and next we have blue. All right, after blue, we have a color collection called Safi. At least I think that that's how you pronounce it. After Zafi, we have purple. All right, next up we have I think you pronounce it phlox. If it's something different, let me know in the comments below, but I've been calling it phlox. All right, next up we have pink.
All right. And my favorite color out of all these, jazzberry. Yes, that is actually the name of a color, jazzberry. And Jazzberry 8 is actually my favorite color. And uh, if you see the next video, this is, uh, I use this for a very special use that I'll uh, show you guys on the next video. Next up is Burgundy. This is Burgundy number one. And there we go, that was the last collection. Now I do have some additional colors that I put at the very end, and that's basically for me to use on my group tracks, my FX channels, and my bus channels. So these are the two that I use right now, which is group track number one, number two, and I like using green for my FX channels. Helps me separate them and I use these two. And then on my last three channels that I'll use, I'll use a Submaster, a Master Bus, and a Stereo Out. And these are the colors that I tend to use right here. Everything gets routed back to these three colors here. And there you go. All right. Well, um, so here's where the extra bonus is going to come in. It took me a while to put these all in, right? So you're not going to have to because I'm going to be providing this actual Cubase session for you, which includes all of these colors already put in. Just check the link below and then you'll be able to download that session. Once you open that session, you'll be able to add these colors into your sessions, you know, for a particular session or even a master color palette for yourself. So hopefully that will save you a lot of time. If you're not using Cubase, then you can take these formulas that I just showed you, pick ever which one you want and go ahead and put them in your DAW of choice. Okay. So I hope that certainly helps there. Okay. So like I was saying before, I think one of the things that really helps is organizing your tracks, especially as a film composer, we get a lot of tracks and to color coat them and organize them by color makes it a lot easier for us to look for uh, a particular instrument in our workflow. So it really speeds up our workflow. So I recommend that you use color palettes whenever possible. Okay. All right, folks. Well, that is it for this episode. On the next one, I'm going to start a series when we're going to build an orchestral template in Cubase from the ground up using these colors and some other really cool things that I think that will be very beneficial to your workflow. So we'll look for that one in the next uh, few days to come. But in the meanwhile, if you have any questions or comments, please comment below. Again, my name is Santiago Valencia. It's a pleasure being here with you. I certainly do hope that this helps. And uh, until next time, it's been a real slice. All right. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.